Crimson and warped fungus and roots are really useful for getting loads of compost, growing trees, or even for breeding mobs. But getting a lot of it can be really difficult because the nether is a dangerous place. I can get you loads in the overworld. Don't you go anywhere. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, and welcome to another episode from me, Avamance, in my Minecraft 116 Nether Update Farms tutorial series. Today, I'm going to show you how to get lots of crimson roots, crimson fungus, warped roots, and warped fungus. Why Avamance? What on earth would I want all of that rubbish for? Well, crimson roots are a really, really good compostable item. 65% chance of getting a compost update with just one crimson root. Way, way better than seeds or anything else in the overworld like that, except for maybe pumpkin pie. Fungus, they can be used for a number of different things. You can grow nether trees, for example, and get all of the crimson stems and the warp stems, etc. Or you could use them to breed hoglins if they're crimson, or to breed striders if they're warped. And you can even use them on the end of a stick with striders to make you easily cross the lava as long as you've got a saddle. I'm going to show you how to make this farm. It is an absolute doddle and you get loads. I mean thousands of these things in an hour. Everything you need to build this is in this chest. So you can see we have got 10 buckets of water, four chests, 10 hoppers, two random conducted blocks. I'm using cobblestone because it's dirt cheap. Then some dirt, 45 of them, 58 oak planks, two levers, 11 dispensers, one stone button, about eight lanterns, five torches, 98 blocks of glass. We've got one crimson nylium, one warped nylium. Remember, you'll need silk touch to collect those from the nether. 24 redstone dust, 13 redstone repeaters, two redstone comparators, a crimson trap door. And then I've also got 18 crimson hyphae, 94 stripped warp stems, and 77 crimson slabs. Now, the choice of these blocks is entirely down to you, but given it's nethery, I thought we'd go with those. This entire farm sits on a footprint of 14 long by 11 wide. I've also put in a few different colours here to indicate where the different components are going to go underneath the farm. Yellow is light, red is redstone, black are hoppers, purple are dispensers, and the other colours are just blocks and chests. So let's build up this underneath layer. Pop a dispenser there and a dispenser there. It's important that it is a dispenser and not a dropper. Also, get yourself a hopper there and then come around the other side of it and shift click another hopper into it and then remove the first hopper and get the second hopper in there. So you can see the towels are poking into each other. Then get a redstone comparator, face it out of that hopper and another one facing out of that hopper going directly into the dispensers that's really important then get two more hoppers and shift click all the way to the edge here and one more so you've got a row of three and then shift click all the way to the edge here and one more again so you have a row of three get yourself your light and pop a light there and there it's really important to light up your redstone circuits there and there then get a block. Now, it doesn't matter what block, it just needs to be a conductive block. I'm going to use cobblestone and pop it right in there. Put a redstone line, one, two, three, four, five, and then get a repeater and poke it out of there. Leave it on a single tick and then get, I think, oak planks look best and pop it right there. That is the start of your circuit. Now, the next choice of blocks actually doesn't matter too much, but I figured because it's a nethery farm, let's use nethery blocks. So I've got here these stripped warped hyphae. I'm going to run stripped warped hyphae all the way there. I'm going to miss that block and pop one there. And then I'm going to come all the way along to the hopper. And then I'm going to keep running all the way along here to the hopper and then run all the way around to the other side. We are going to swap some of these blocks out in a minute. But again, this is purely for decoration. You can choose whatever block type you like, because in each corner, I'm going to put in a crimson hyphae like that. And I'm also going to put a crimson hyphae right in the middle. Now, the next part, before you put the next layer on, is quite important. It's important you do it in the right order too. Put a lever onto that block and this bit, throw it. Otherwise, the noise for the rest of the build is going to drive you mad. And then come along to this hopper and put in a single block. Doesn't matter what, again, I'm putting in cobblestone. Make sure it's a 64 stackable block, but cobblestone is absolutely fine. Now, this is what happens when you turn this lever off. 
you can see those dispensers are basically clocked to poke out whatever's inside them constantly. So that's why you keep this lever turned off or on so as it just locks that popper here so as the item doesn't move around as a result of the signal going into this block. It's time to do the next layer. I've moved these lights in just one row. It doesn't actually matter what the position of the lights are, but these two rows need to be kept clear. Apologies for that. Next layer has got our nylium on. So it doesn't matter which one you put on. So put one of your nyliums on there with a shift click and then put the other color nylium on here with a shift click. Now, if you just want crimson or warped and you don't want both, just do two crimson nylium or two warped nylium. It's entirely up to you. It really does not matter. Right now, we're going to be putting in some dirt. Now, I think dirt is just the simplest thing to put in. So come along and we're going to completely fill up this floor with dirt and we're going to come out two in each direction from the nylium. So you can see from the edge, we've got two there. From the edge, we've got two there and we'll come out two in this direction and we're going to do exactly the same around the warp nylon. So you can see there you have a platform that is nine blocks across and five blocks down with the two different nyliums right in the middle. We need to put a little more structure in now. Apart from that final block there, come along with, I'm just gonna use planks because I can, all the way along the side there. Then get a little bit more of your stripped wart stem and cover over the blocks that you've got, the stripped wart stem there, all the way around. Put your crimson hyphae on the corners there as well. In this one here, I want you to take a hopper and I want you to poke a hopper into that block there, exactly like that. Remove that block, then get yourself a double chest. I think double chest works best. And then put another hopper running from that hopper into the double chest, that is perfect. And then what we can do is we can replace that block like that. So we've got a solid row all the way. And then follow all the way, hop that one, come all the way around, hop that one, and leave that gap also and then pop a chest there and also a chest there that is going to be your feeder chest so as you can put bone mill into your dispensers when they've run out now to create the collection system so we're going to come out three all the way along here so this is a nine by three platform i'm doing this in planks it doesn't have to be planks you could do it in cobble or something else like that if you wish to that's entirely up to you then put another block there and come along all the way to the side like that. Then we get ourselves some dispensers. We're gonna put a dispenser on each of these blocks facing into the dirt exactly like that. And then we're gonna get a dot of, of redstone on and every other one we're gonna put a dot of redstone and the ones in the middle we're going to put a dispenser like that and then get a redstone line that runs all the way along like that. Now you can see we've got the last redstone line on the block above the block with that lever. Get another lever and pop it on there like that. Then put another repeater right there. That stops a feedback loop and then we can start to set up this area here. Now what's gonna happen here is we're gonna have dot there, dot there, dot there. Then we're going to have one, two, three, four, and one, two, and three and set all these to four ticks. Do that by right clicking on them three times. Then get two dots of redstone there and any block, doesn't matter what the block is. Don't do anything with that block just yet because at the moment we don't want to set this system off, but do put a button on it right there and then get yourself another lantern and just for lighting up purposes, put a light right there. You then want to get yourself some torches. Primarily we're gonna to use torches now because they hang off the gaps, you know, so you can put them on the side whereas lanterns don't do exactly the same. So we're just gonna to put torches on every two. And that makes sure that this redstone system is entirely lit up. So when you get the redstone pulse, it doesn't cause there to be a light update which can cause lag, especially on servers. I've filled each of these dispensers with just one bucket of water. Now make sure you've got them all with a bucket of water because if you miss one, it ain't gonna work properly. Now we just need to finish off the structure. Now on the block that is opposite that button there, just put yourself a bit of a trap door. I like to use the crimson one because it offsets the color against these warped ones. And then get your stripped warp stems and come all the way along the edge like this. 
come as far as the dispensers but don't go beyond them and the same on the other side and then get your crimson hyphae and put it on these corners here like that then get yourself a crimson slab and just slab over the entirety of this block here because you don't need access to this anymore so get it covered now that leaves us the front of the system doesn't it so what we're going to do is we're going to bring up this crimson hyphae here not the front one and there and then we're going to bring glass all the way along here i like glass because that means i can see what's going on inside because i'm nosy like that get it all the way along the edge over the edge of that chest as well exactly like that and then put a second layer of glass all the way like that and again get your crimson high feet and pop that up there now you've got a choice now you can either fill this in with some more crimson slab if you prefer you can do that just like that but i think one because it looks nicer and two because a top slab of crimson slab would be spawnable fill it in with glass all the way along now because those crimson slabs there are bottom half slabs and this is glass these are not now spawnable blocks and that's what we're looking for notice i'm not filling in this end one just yet let's come along here fill it fill it fill it fill it and fill it now what we want is we want a lantern and we want a bucket of water get one lantern there put a bucket of water in that bottom so as it runs all the way along to that um, hopper there we can then fill in this glass get the lantern again and pop one on there because these hyphae are spawnable so that just stops that spawnability right there now the structure of the farm is now complete but we need to make sure we've got plenty of bone meal so in this chest here get yourself your bone meal and just put a load of bone meal in that's perfect then round the other side do exactly the same open up your chest and get a load of bone meal and shove it in there the amount of bone meal you put in here doesn't matter obviously the longer you use it the more bone meal you are going to use now this is ready to roll this farm can be turned on and off at your leisure. The bottom lever controls whether the bone meal goes in and therefore whether or not you get your crimson roots, your wart roots or your funguses. The top one locks the system for the water dispensation. So you can see if I was to flick that lever now, that would turn on the redstone that you can see in the right hand side of the system, which therefore locks th those dispensers in place. They don't have a signal going in and out. This side is going to cycle. Once we press this button, it's going to cycle permanently. Now we need to stop the system by locking this side. That will continue to flow. That's fine. It doesn't matter. It doesn't make any noise. It doesn't cause any lag because we've lit it up. It is all good. So what we're going to do first is we're going to flick on the the roots and the fungus so that carries on it only actually dispenses bone meal if there is going to be a reaction at the end of it so once you've done the first one it doesn't waste any more bone meal then what we're going to do to get the water flowing and so as we can collect it we're going to press that button you can see that starts a pulse that cycles around that system and then you get a second one goes and it turns it on and off like that again as I say if we were to flick that lever that would stop the system it would stop the flowing in and out of the water and it holds the system ready if we turn that off that then stops the dispensers and stops the noise but we want both on so that will carry on and the water goes and it's the right timing for to have bone mill flash in there whilst there's no water which grows your warts and your stems and then the water comes and flashes them away I've got the system turned off now. So what we're going to do is we're going to test this to see how much stuff we can get in just five minutes. So we're going to have a five minute test. We're going to let it run for five minutes and we're going to see how much stuff we get. You'll notice right now this chest is empty. I've emptied it out from what we did before. So five minutes starting from when I turn the system on again. There we go. So that is going to flow. And off we go. And that is five minutes. So let's switch the system off. So as we get a fair test and you can see 
that is sat finished now dormant isn't on any longer so how much have we got Goodness me, you can see there is still stuff flowing into the chest even now. We've got the crimson root still flowing in because the hoppers can only transfer so much stuff at once. It is a very effective system as you can see. So looking at all of this, I'm just going to tidy it up. That's much better now. I can see what we're doing. So we've got nearly a full stack of the crimson fungus and the warp fungus. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a little bit. Uh, full stacks of crimson roots and we've got very nearly six full stacks of warped roots now obviously with the bone mill there's a little bit of randomness in what physically gets dispensed so it's reasonably statistically accurate that it would be i think about one two three four five six and a half ish stacks of each of the root variants and about a stack of the fungus variants so across an entire hour that is going to give you about two and a half thousand of each of the roots and about three and a half thousand of each of the fungus in an hour. Now these crimson and warped roots and fungi might look like they're just decorative but actually they've got a lot of things you can do with them. Let's take the fungi. If you were to use the fungi on a piece of nylium with a bit of bone meal that is going to grow into the giant form into its big old tree and I'm going to show you that in just a moment. Also the roots, if you put those in a compost, there is a 65% chance that they increase the composter's level. So you end up creating lots of bone mill as a result of doing this farm. You actually end up with a surplus of bone mill, which is great. It fuels itself and you get extra bone mill on top of it as well. Obviously, of course, crimson fungi can be used to breed hoglins and the warp fungi can be used to breed striders. And if you put them on the end of a stick, you can make the strider ride around with a saddle. You can use these fungus to get lots of the nether trees. Just use the crimson or the warp variants of the fungus and the nylium. Hit it with a bit of bone meal and boom, you are going to get these big crimson trees. Not only that, sometimes you get the vines and you also sometimes get that shroom light block, which is a really good way of being able to gather shroom lights virtually for free. So in reality, what this farm is giving you is not just roots and fungus. It is giving you all of the different nether woods. It's giving you vines. It's giving you shroom lights. It's giving you bone mill. It's giving you hoglins. It's giving you striders. It's giving you loads. It is a completely OP farm and I recommend you give it a go. If you have enjoyed this video, please do remember to slap that like button. It'd be great to know you're enjoying them and I will keep on making them. Also, if you've not done it already, Please do hit that subscribe button. It'd be great to see you in my sub club. And I look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye.